Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow's Spiritual Motivation. Welcome back. Happy, happy, happy Saturday to you all. All of my videos are pre-recorded and they are pre-recorded and scheduled to be released the following day. So even though I'm saying Saturday, this video is scheduled to be released for Sunday. I think, or Monday, I don't know, but they're all pre-recorded, I have to be on the schedule, and I plan on all of my videos to be uh, uploaded, processed, and out by 10 a.m. every day, okay, so if they don't be out by 10 a.m., don't charge it to my heart, charge it to my head, because I, I do the best that I can do, okay, so we are back with another video, thank God for each and every one of you that do come to this platform and join me for this spiritual uh, motivational lesson. We are doing the second part of prayer. That's the part we did on the very first video that uploaded on this channel. And today we are going to be finishing it out today so we can move on to another top. Uh, excuse me for Bill. Also, if I decide to snack I'm going to be having some grapefruits and apples. They're cut up in here. Grapefruit and apples. That's if I decided to snack. Dinner is not too far away, so I don't know if I'm going to do too much snacking because i got to do dinner and get that video up and recorded for my other channel, Miss Glow Glow Loves Love. That'll be my dinner mukbang video when dinner is done. On that channel, I will be having black eyed peas, smoked turkey necks, pig feet, and cornbread. That is it. That's my dinner mukbang, and I'll be having a, a water drink mix that you shake up in the bottle. So that is it. But anyway, let's stick with this right here, what we are doing. We are going to be talking about prayers today. Last, The other day we covered uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, Scriptures. So we're going to try to go ahead and knock the rest of these scriptures out, but we're talking about prayer. And to start this video off, I'm going to invite the Lord in. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I invite you to this platform. Lord, you are the owner, the master, the creator. And God, I ask that you bless us. Bless me. Bless the ones that come here to hear, receive this word. Let it be done to magnify, to glorify, to edify you, and to lift others up. Never to tear down. I ask that you remove all doubt from me and anyone that enter this platform, God, and increase our faith in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, your word say, if your peoples who are called by your name shall humble themselves and pray, seek your face, turn from their wicked ways, you know, you said that you will hear from heaven and you will forgive their sins and God, you will heal this land. I believe you, God. I claim it. I receive it in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Covered by the blood. Let your word be a blessing to the reader, hearers, doers, listeners, learners, and viewers in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Welcome back, everybody. So we are going to start off with Jeremiah 33 and 3. We are still talking about prayers, prayers. So we're going to start out with Jeremiah. My my thing will be holding me up is um, I be wanting to go through my Bible, and this Bible that I have is new. So the thing is, this is so thick, and the pages are so thin. That's what be taking me long is turning to the pages and stuff, even though I know where to go in the Bible is. It's just the pages are so thin. So, that's all I can say. Hey, not throwing no shade, no lies, telling you what you need to hear, which is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So, we're going to Jeremiah 33. And it is 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Okay? Jeremiah 33, verse 3. And it reads as thus, Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. The word said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee. I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That's the word of the Lord. He's saying, Call unto him. Call unto him, and he will answer us. And he's going to show us great and mighty things which we knoweth not. 
and we don't know. You know, the mind cannot perceive the knowledge of Christ. No. Mm-mm. Your thoughts are not like his thoughts. Your ways are not like his ways. Your mind is not like his mind. But he said, he will answer you and he will show you great and mighty things. Let's stick with that, okay? If we go to the footnotes on that, it said, God assures Jeremiah that he has only to ask. He has only to ask. God is ready to answer our prayers, but we must ask for his assistance. That sums it up. It tells you everything. When you go to God in prayer, he is ready to answer your prayers. He is ready to answer your prayers. Okay? He said, but we must ask for his assistance. We got to ask him. We got to ask him just for what we want, for what we need. He ready to answer our prayers, okay? Surely he could take care of our needs without us asking. But when we ask, we are acknowledging that he alone is God and that we cannot accomplish our own strength, cannot accomplish anything in our own strength. All that is his domain to do. We cannot accomplish anything without the strength of the Lord. We cannot accomplish anything in our own strength. When we think we are strong, trust and believe, we are weak. We are weaker than the weak. Only by the strength of Jesus Christ have we, are we made strong. The words say only the strong will survive. We have to be strong in the Lord to survive. And in this world, this day and time and age we're living in, you've got to be reeled up, geared up, and strengthened up in the love of Jesus. Oh, yes, because we're living in some perilous times now. We are living in some perilous times. The world is getting worse and worse. And it's not just the world, it's the people in the world that is causing chaos, destruction, and a whole lot of stuff to come up on this world. Because nobody wants to acknowledge and to let go and let God. Everybody want to do it on their own. Not so, says the Lord. Okay? Then it says, Acknowledging that he alone is God and that we cannot accomplish in our own strength all that is his domain to do. When we ask, we must humble ourselves, lay aside our willfulness and worry and determine to obey him. We have to lay aside our own self. And we must be determined. And be willing to obey God and trust him. Trust his holy word. Okay? Now, uh, 33, 15, and 16. Let me just see what this one is saying. 33, 15, and 16. I'm just trying to see if it correlates to what we are talking about. 15 and 16. Okay, sorry about that. I had to read that. I like to correlate verses. You know, if I'm right next to a verse that correlates to the one I'm discussing, I like to gibber it right on in there and give you guys that good food, that milk, that nourishment that we all need from the Lord. Okay, let's go on to um, 20, Jeremiah 29, 11, and 13. So we're going to go back just a little bit. Jeremiah 29. Verses 11 through 13. Okay? And it says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and you shall find me. And when you search for me, with all your heart, and I will be found of you, says the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, 
and from all the places where thou have driven you, said the Lord, and I will bring you again unto a place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. Now, let's go to the footnotes on it, because that was self-explanatory. God, the word said, you're going to call upon me, okay? It said, uh, 11, it said, for I, I know the thoughts, and I know the thoughts, and I think towards you, said the Lord. For I know the thoughts, and that I think towards you. Okay, let's go to the footnotes on uh, Jeremiah 11. Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, and it says, we, all, we, we are all encouraged by leaders who stirs us to move ahead. Someone who believes we can do the task he has given and who will be with us all the way. Okay, God is that kind of leader. He is known, the, he knows the future, and his plan for us are good and full of hope. As long as God, who knows the future, provides, provides for our agenda and goes with us as we fulfill his mission, we can have boundless hope. This does not mean we will be spared pain, suffering, or hardship. Okay? Just because we are going on and we are fulfilling the mission that God has for us, he did not say that he was going to spare us from uh, pain and suffering or hardship. Okay? Those are things that come with life. Those are trials and tribulations. Somewhere in this life, our faith has to be tested. If he gives us everything good all the time, then, of course, he knows we're going to follow him. That's just like Job. Like the, the devil uh, wanted God to tempt Job. You know, to, to let the cause Job's body to be uh, sick and sore and took Job through all that, that he went through because he said that God was giving him everything that he Job wanted. God was giving it to him. He was covering him. And he told the Lord, if you take that covering off of him and take that hedge from around his body so that I can touch him, so that I can put some sores and some bars on him, I'm sure he'll curse you. But guess what? The devil was a lie. He was a lie. Job was a good and faithful man. Okay? Now, just because we are fulfilling God's mission that he had for our life does not mean that we're not going to have pain, suffering, or hardship. Okay? I know that. I have been through that. And I'm still holding on to God. I have not been saved all my life. I am still a sinner. Everybody that's living in this world is yet a sinner. But I am striving and I am seeking God's face so that I can find perfection one day. There is no perfect being in this world. So just because you decide to give your life over to God and become a Christian does not mean you're not going to have hardship, pain, or suffering. It does not mean it. Read this word. Get it for yourself. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. Okay? And then it says, but that God will see us through to a glorious conclusion. He's going to see us through. He's going to bring us through. He's going to take us in it and bring us out of it. Gloriously. Okay? Then they say God did not forget his people. Even though they were captives in Babylon, he planned to give them a new beginning and a new purpose. To tie them into new people. In times of deep trouble, it may seem that God has forgotten you. But God may be preparing you as he did the peoples of Judah for a new beginning with him at the center. According to God's wise plan, his peoples were to have hope. And a future. So they could call upon him in confidence. That's God's plan for us. That we have hope and a future. And so that we would be able to call upon him in confidence. Without, a, without doubt at all. Though the exiles were in different places and time. They should not despair. For they had God's presence. The privilege of prayer and God's grace. God can be sought and found when we seek him urgently and whole. Heartedly. 
neither strange land, sorrows, frustration, nor physical problems can break our communion with God. We must wholeheartedly seek God. He's right there. He let us know he's right here. All we have to do is call on him. Call on him. That's it. Going moving right on to the next scripture. We're going to Psalms 91 15. Psalms 91 15. Psalms 91 15. Psalms 91 and 15, guys. We got to move it on because this time goes so fast on this thing, I'm telling you. And I be trying not to have such long, long videos, even though the longer the video, if people watch all your videos, guess what? That helps with your watch time hours. But, you know, only God knows. Maybe God will let a stranger just click on the videos and play them, play them, play them. Who's to say? I don't know. Psalms 91, 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. God said, you shall call upon me, and he going to answer us. And I will be with you in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. Let's go to, uh, I don't think we got footnotes, footnotes on that because it's pretty self-explanatory. That is pretty self-explanatory. He said, I would, he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. All talking about prayer. This is teaching us how to pray. It is building our strength and our confidence up in prayer so that when we go to God in prayer, we can go to him with a solid prayer a solid prayer the words god word say a this church a this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it we got to go to hear god we got to call upon him we got to be that solid rock we got to be steadfast and unmovable okay let's go to psalms 37 and 4 I'm trying to break this down, so if we have to do another video, that'll be the third. That'll be the third video, 37 and 4, and that'll be the end of it. There was quite a bit of uh, in here about prayer, but we need this. Everybody needs to know how to pray. If you got somebody sick in the hospital and stuff, when you pray for them, you got to pray. You can't go there playing. Mm. Great food. Great food is so fulfilling. Okay. Psalms 37 and where we at? Four. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He said, commit thy ways unto the Lord, and trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You hear that? He shall bring it to pass. Then if we go to the footnote, it says, number four, it said, David calls us to take delight in the Lord and to commit everything we have and do to him. Because how we do this, commit ourselves to the Lord, I mean, in trusting everything, everything, our lives, our families, our jobs, our possessions, our money, in trusting everything we have to the Lord. Take it to head. Take it to heart, guys. This is how. This is how you build a prayer relationship with God and get closer to him so that he can answer your cries. He already told us that he will supply all of our needs. Hey, take take heed. That is Psalms 37 and 4. Okay? Then it says, to control, to his control and guidance, to commit ourselves to the Lord means to trust him. Believing that he can care for us better than we can ourselves. We should be willing to wait patiently for him to work out what is best for us. That's why a lot of people don't get their prayers answered. Because you know why? They give it to God. They give it to God. 
and then they'll go back and pick it up. You got to give it to God and leave it with God. It's no need of asking God to take care of something if you're going to constantly go run and keep telling it to this person, bringing it up. That means you're taking it right back out of his hands. And if you're going to take it back out of his hands, obviously you got the master plan. Obviously you got more power than God. Why even take it to him in the first time if you're not going to have the patience and the trust to believe him and to wait and let him work it out? Okay? It says, to delight in someone means to experience great pleasure and joy in his or her presence. This happens only when we know that person. Thus, to delight in the Lord, we must know him better. Knowledge of God. Great love for us will indeed give us delight. Delight yourself in the Lord. It's just that easy. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give us the desires of our heart. Moving right on. Let's go to um, 145 and 18. I don't know how far we is, but we're going to try to get this done. 145. That's Psalms 145, verse 18, guys. And it says, The Lord is nigh unto all them. The Lord is near unto all of us that calls upon him. And to all of us that call upon him in truth. Not only God is, is near to us if we call upon him, but we must call upon him in truth. Don't go to God with a lie, or as the young people say, Catherine, because he already know your cap. You got to go to him in truth, okay? You got to go to him in truth. That was 145 and 18, okay? And do we have footnotes on 18? No, nope. but let me read this. 145, 14 if we go to 14, it says, The Lord upholded all that fall, and raised it up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all waited upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thy hand and satisfied the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, and to all that call upon him in truth. Now, lift the footnote says, Sometimes our burden may seem more than we can buy, bear. And we wonder how we can go on. The psalmist stand at the bleak intersection of the life road and point towards the Lord. The great burden bearer. That's what God is, a burden bearer. Not just a burden bearer, it's the great burden bearer. God is able to lift us up because he, number one, is great beyond discovery. Two, does mighty acts across many generations. Three, is full of glorious honor and majesty. Four, he does wondrous works and terrible acts. Five, he is righteous. Six, he is gracious and compassionate, patient and merciful. Okay? Seven, he reaches out to us with tenderness. Eight, he rules over an everlasting kingdom. Nine, he is our source in all of our daily needs. Ten, he is righteous and holy in all his dealing. Eleven, he remains close to those who call on him. Twelve, he listens to our cries and saves us. If you are bending under a burden and feel that you are about to fall, people, if you are bending under your burdens and if you feel like you are about to fall, Turn to God, hallelujah, for help. He is ready to lift you up, hallelujah, Jesus, and bear your burdens. That's what happened when Jesus went to the cross for us. He went to the cross for us so that he can bear our burdens. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. We're going to do one more. Let's see, I'm trying to see the time. We're going to do one more, maybe two more, and then we'll do the rest. We'll have a three videos for this series. This could be a three-video series, okay? This will be part two, okay? This is, we're going to 38 and 15. We're trying to do as much as we can, 38 and 15. 38 
and 15. Psalms 38, 15. It says, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope for thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. Mm. 37 and 15. That's Psalms 38 and 15. And there's no footnotes on it, which it makes sense because it is really self-explanatory. It says, for in thee, for in the Lord, I do hope in you, God. And I know you will hear, O Lord, my God. I have hope in the Lord because he hears me. Plain and simple. Let's go on to Proverbs 15, 29. Okay? Proverbs 15, 29. We got to try to break this down. 15, 29. 15, 29. And it says, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heard the prayers of the righteous. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteousness. Okay? And it says, a good man think before he speaks because he wants to say what he knows is the best possible way, in the best possible way. The evil man doesn't wait to speak because he doesn't care about the effects of his word. That is so true. It is important to have something to say, but it's equally important to say it well. Do you carefully plan your words or do you pour out your thoughts without concerns for their impact? Plain and simple. That is Proverbs 15 and 29. Read it and get the wisdom of the word for yourself. Let's go to Hebrews 4 and 6. Hebrews 4 and 6. Hebrews 4 and 6. This will be taking up my time, but that's okay. That is okay. <laughs> It don't matter. We gonna get it. Hebrews two four 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 two. I'm right there somewhere in it. Two four. That's Hebrews four sixteen. Yep. My Bible. My pages is so thin. But I love this Bible. I literally, literally love it. The footnotes, it's, it's just explained. It breaks everything down to you. Hebrews 4, 16. It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God say boldly, boldly. Coming to the throne of grace. Boldly approach the throne of grace in prayer. Boldly approach the throne of grace in prayer. Okay? That we may obtain mercy from the Lord. And find grace to help us in the time of need. So explanatory. That is Hebrews 4 and 16. And it says, Prayer is our approach to God. And we are to come boldly unto the throne of grace. Some Christians approach God meekly with head hung, afraid to ask him to meet their needs. Others pray flippantly with little thoughts. Come with reverence, for he is your king, but also come with bold assurance for your come with bold assurance, for he is your friend and your counselor. Approach God with boldness. But come, but approach him with assurance that you know that he is going to answer your prayers. God said he gives us grace and mercy daily. There's a new grace and new mercy for us daily, guys. And I want everybody to know that. The word, the real word, this word needs to be put out there. It needs to be heard. It needs to be seen. It needs to be captivated, cultivated. It needs to be stirred up. It is time now for people to know that they can boldly approach the throne of grace. John 16, 23, 24. These are going to be the last scriptures for this part. I'm going to cut this video off and we will finish it tomorrow if God said it. 
same thing, okay? Because we don't want to go over too much because then it won't let my video upload. So we're going to go to John 16 right quick. John 16. And, and going to read these. 16, 23, and 24. And it say, In that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask in ask, the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. That's it. John 16, 23, and 24. Whatever you ask, ask in the Father's name. 16. Jesus is talking about a new relationship between the believers and God. The believers are us and God. Previously, the people approached God through priests. After Jesus' resurrection and the believers could approach God directly. After Jesus died on the cross and raised, was resurrected again, that made, that opened up the bridge. It built a bridge where we can approach him ourselves. That's what it did. That we can approach him ourselves, okay? After Jesus' resurrection, any believer could approach God directly. Now we can go to God directly ourselves because Jesus and already went to the cross, gave his life up, and rose again so that where he go, we may be able to go also, okay? A new day has dawned, and now all believers are priests talking with God personally and directly. We approach God not because of our own merit, but because of Jesus. Our great high priest has made us acceptable unto God. Acceptable unto God. Let's go to 15 and 7. We finna be, we finna be done. 15 and 7. It says, If ye abide in me, and... My words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. If you abide in God and abide in his word, you, can, you shall ask what you want, and it shall be given unto you. Plain and simple. Those are the words from Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. That's 15 and 7. 15 and 7. It say many people try to do good, but try to do good, be honest, and do what is right. But Jesus says only the only way to live a truly good life is to stay close to him. Like a branch attached to a vine, apart from him our efforts are unfruitful. Are you receiving the nourishment and life offered by Christ the vine? If not, you are missing a special gift he has for you. Without Christ, without Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. Everything we do is unfruitful. That's all I got to say on there. Read it for yourself. John 15 and 7. Let's go to John 14, and then we're going to end this video. I truly appreciate and thank you guys for coming. And I hope that you all got something out of this. Read it. Get the wisdom of the word. That is John 14, 13, and 14. And it read as this. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Those are the words of Jesus. If you ask anything in his name, he will do it. Okay, let's read that again. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, in Jesus' name, that he will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whatever you ask in Jesus' name, he's going to do it so that his Father may be glorified in him, okay? If you ask anything in my name, he said he would do it. He would do it. 13 and 14, it said Jesus is not saying that his disciples would do more amazing miracles. After all, raising the dead is about as amazing as you can get. Rather, the disciples working in the power of the Holy Spirit would carry the gospel of God's kingdom out, Palestine, and to the whole world. When Jesus says we can ask for anything, we must remember that our asking must be in his name, that is according to God's character and will. God will not grant requests contrary to his nature or his will. We cannot use his name as magic. For, as a magic formula to fulfill our selfish desires, if we are sincerely following God and seeking to do his will, then our requests will be in line with what he wants, and he will grant them. Read 
uh, John 15, 16, and 16, 23. That concludes it. We're going to stop right there. So this part is going to be part three. And we will come back. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scriptures that we're going to be going over maybe a little bit more. That'll be part three. Okay. But I want to thank you all for tuning in. I hope you got something out of this session of Bible study on the topic prayer. We know how to boldly approach the throne of God. We know how to call on his name. We know how to ask him for what we want and believe, receive, wait, and be patient. Okay? We know how to give our burdens to God. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you let your word be a blessing to the readers, hears, doers, listeners, and learners in Jesus Christ's holy name. Lord, we ask that you bless everyone that hear, that receive these words. Fill them, Lord. Use them, qualify, equip them, Lord, and let everything be done for your edification and for the glorifying of your son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And we have peace because you said, peace you left here for us. With that being said, guys, remember we're all under one God, one nation, one love. Stay safe, stay prayed up, stay blessed, continue to pray. Ask God to remove all doubt and remember that you can boldly approach the throne of grace and know that what you ask, you shall receive. I love you all. Stay safe, stay blessed, and continue to increase your faith. Bye. Remember, God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son.